Yeah, Dango Stu here. Uh, today we're going to be making a direct voltage adapter. Uh, these are used uh, on outboards uh, for diagnosing or testing ignition. So the ignition puts out a reasonably high uh, AC current, like an alternating current, um, with very brief sort of transient peaks. So you often see these uh, referred to as um, also a peak voltage adapter, and that's kind of the idea of them, is that we're taking an AC current, converting it to DC, and then adding a little bit of a kind of a delay in so we can just um, store up a capacitor and try and read what is a peak voltage that was reached rather than having these really fine um, uh, sort of transients that the multimeter can't display for you. So um, as the name suggests, it's actually an adapter, not a meter in its own right. So we're going to be uh, building one to connect to this digital multimeter. So let's get going. It's a pretty simple circuit, um, um, but I do notice these things sell for quite a bit, over 100 bucks on eBay, um, and that's why I decided to make one myself. They're reasonably cheap components. When you see what's inside one, there really just isn't that much to it. So you can save yourself quite a few dollars by making one of these. All right, so let's get started. So this is um, the circuit I got off the net. I'll show you that. Hopefully that's clear enough for you to see. Um, if you Google DVA circuit diagram, you'll find that exact image pretty readily. Um, might look a little bit complicated, but really all it is is a diode going to a resistor, uh, a capacitor here and another resistor. So it won't take us long to put this together, and then we'll go on and um, actually use it and get some uh, test results with it. So when it comes down to the heart of the project, that's really what's inside a direct voltage adapter. And that's what you're paying kind of a hundred bucks for at the end of the day. I mean, yeah, okay, the case and the wires obviously add up, but they really are that simple, four main components. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this case first. Um, so I'm just going to drill each end just a hole large enough to pass these two wires through. Now these leads are, you know, what are they, about a metre long. Um, but I'm thinking what I'm going to do is cut them close to the ends that go into the multimeter because um, I'll probably have this adapter sitting near the multimeter and just have a bit more lead length to actually do your probing. So I'll sort of cut cut about here I think. I think that's going to be the most sort of versatile setup. So the board I'm going to use uh, looks like this and you can see how it's got the uh, tracks connected in various places between the holes which makes the wiring a little bit easier. Um, I think it's called a Vero board, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm not really a electronics expert by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if you're looking for that sort of thing, then pop over to uh, a friend of mine, Luke Small. He's got a YouTube channel uh, and does lots of electronics projects and knows more about electronics than, uh, than I ever will, that's for sure. Uh, so the idea with this one is that where you want, you can connect the component between uh, two already connected holes, so it's like joining them with a wire. Um, but you can also uh, take a little drill bit like this, just in a little hand drill bit, and drill out holes to cut the wire, essentially, disconnect them. So if you just take a look at your board, have a look at the circuit, see what needs to join what, you can usually figure out a way pretty easily that allows you to connect up this circuit in the way it needs to be without doing any extra wiring if you use this sort of board. So the first component I'm going to put in is this little diode. And you can see it's got a little uh, white line at one end. And that white line needs to go this side. So the current comes in on the blank side and travels to the side with the, the white line. This is the component that um, stops the current flowing both ways. It only lets it flow one way, and that ultimately is what rectifies a AC current into being a DC current. So I'm going to pop this one in first. So with these boards, you just pop your component in from the top side and then solder onto the side with the copper tracks. And once you've popped it through, I just bend the legs out a little bit sideways to stop it falling out again. And once they're done, I just trim the trim the legs off, and you're good to go. So here you can see this this is connected along a track, but I've drilled out in between, so the current can't just flow along the track. It has to flow through that diode. So I've just popped the uh, resistor on the same track now because they run along in series on this circuit. Um, doesn't matter which way around the resistors go; they work both ways, so you don't have to worry about that. So the next component I'm going to uh, add in here is this capacitor. 
Um, these do have to go around the right way, like the diode. And the way you can tell this is the on the body of it here, you'll see it's got a um, a white or a silver stripe here on this shorter leg, and that's the negative. And the black section where the leg is longer is the positive side. So that's how you can tell which way around these go. So now I'm going to cut these uh, multiple blades and then just uh, strip them back so I can solder them in. So the input side, which is where we're going to do our probes, uh, is coming into this uh, diode, then to the uh, negative side of the capacitor. So I'll do these two uh, input probes first, um, but I am going to draw this case and pass them through. It'll make it a little bit harder to remove this circuit board, but I can't imagine ever needing to, so I'm going to go that way. So now I've got it all soldered up, uh, components and the two halves of these multimeter leads going in. So I'm going to put it into the case now. Because it's a metal case, I'm just going to wrap it a bit and find a way to stop it shorting out on the case. So I'll get all that set up, uh, screw the lid for the case on, and then we'll start doing some testing with it. Okay, so I'm just going to go and uh, sorry, reach over behind you now, and uh, just jam these in the uh, PowerPoint here. Don't recommend jamming things in PowerPoints generally, but it's what I'm going to do for testing. Um, so at its peak, yeah, so get a good connection somewhere here. Uh, it looks like we're getting about 320 volts as a peak voltage, even though I'm Australia's 240 volts. Um, and then if I disconnect the terminals, you'll see that capacitor just slowly discharge and the voltage drops. But as the name suggests, it does two things, turns AC into DC um, and gives you a peak. So it's a peak voltage adapter or a direct current or a direct voltage adapter, um, depending on where you see it and how people name it. But the purpose is the same. Take an AC current, um, convert it to DC and tell you what the peak is. So, so far we haven't um, talked much about the purpose of this adapter. Um, uh, so, it's designed for testing the primary coil or the current coming out of your uh, CDI unit. And that's the input voltage into the ignition coil. That then we'll sort of amplify that up to tens of thousands of volts to fire the spark plug. So this isn't designed to measure that voltage, that's best measured by, well, really just looking at um, whether you've got a good um, a spark that can jump a good sort of quarter inch gap or whatever, because um, that is a very high voltage. This will measure up to 400 volts because it's got that 400 volt capacitor in it. Um, but no ignition coil is going to give you a strong spark if it's not um, receiving a high enough input voltage to sort of multiply. So this is what this is about testing, that part of the component. Well, that component in the ignition system, sorry, I should say. So there's a few other parts of it that um, you test differently. Um, there's also the, uh, depending on the type of uh, ignition system you've got, but if it's a CDI, then you'll have a, a charge coil that goes in and actually um, charges the capacitor before it uh, gets triggered and it gets triggered by a pulsar coil, which is a very small sort of signal uh, wire that you get off the, um, off the um, sort of crankshaft position sensor under the flywheel. So we'll have a look at all those bits. I'm actually thinking what I might do is uh, wrap this video up here. Um, leave this as a, a video on building the adapter and then I'll do a separate video that goes right through um, the whole sort of ignition system diagnosis process because that um, I think is something that people probably um, will need to go through many times if they don't have spark um, so rather than making people go through the whole making of this I'll say watch this one if you're interested in making this adapter 
So that pretty much uh, wraps up this video. I'm just going to screw on these little um, these leads. Came with a set of uh, alligator clips, which I think are really handy for um, just rigging up to the usually sort of bullet connectors or leads that come out of the um, the CDI unit. So that's it. Built quite portable, quite robust in this case. Uh, used some silicon tape to insulate it to. Um, stop it uh, uh, shorting against the case and nice portable unit you can take it and do the test so I'll now do a follow-up video on how to use this to diagnose the ignition system we'll go right through all the components of the ignition system and how to check that each section is working as a separate video so thanks for watching this one hope you enjoyed it um, as I said this is a, a circuit I just got off the net um, reasonably simple only sort of four components not hard to make um, if you've got any questions about making it, then feel free to uh, just to post a comment. Um, I'll see if I can find a link to this circuit somewhere and post that in the description as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, uh, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.